So with this section of this presentation, we're going to describe a different subject, that of power supply protection. The fact that um, any given power system needs protection in a variety of ways, and there have been many solutions developed over the years. Um, we've got a couple of good ideas. We think we'll, uh, we'll offer some uh, even better solutions. So we're going to talk about the, uh, the issues involved with power supply system protection, which is uh, essentially considering the, the load of the power supply, the system that the power supply is driving. And of course, we recognize the fact that uh, the power supply stands between the, uh, the, all the rampant problems of, uh, of line power and all of the regulating and controlling requirements of a, of a system that it's going to power and is a very critical element in providing protection for the system as well as the required output voltages just to make it operate. Um, everything's subject to failure. There can be failures in a variety of ways, and so it's important to have as many of those designed into your system as possible so that uh, you give an adequate protection. And the kind of uh, protecting circuits that we're talking about are the kind that you would see on the various cards of a multi-card or a multi-module system. Larger systems where you would have uh, a main central power supply, for example, that would take the line power, whatever it might be, and generate a distribution voltage, which oftentimes is in the neighborhood of uh, 24 volts or maybe 48 volts. And and then distribute that around to various circuit cards, each of which has their portions of the system, and each of which needs some protection between that distribution bus and the, um, the rest of the circuit. Then that, that could be caused because of faults uh, in the system card that you wouldn't want to let uh, impact uh, dragging down the, the, uh, the distribution bus, or faults in the main power line that you wouldn't want to get through to impact the performance of the circuitry in the system on the system card. So we're talking about, in this case, um, devices that will operate in up to 60 volts, uh, usually in the 24 to, to 48 volt range, and that would require amount, the amount of current that a typical system card or a system module might be, which is usually not much more than 10 amps or so and oftentimes something less than that. So there's, and you look at system protection, we can think of three different categories of faults that we might want to be, um, that, that we need to provide protection for. Uh, voltage, current, and temperature. Voltage, there's issues of uh, transients that occur. There's the issue of whether you have an older voltage or an under voltage situation, which could cause malfunction. There's the possibility that some goofball might have plugged something in backwards and you get uh, uh, the reverse polarities on the input. So all of these things are things that should and could be protected for. Current also has a multiple of, of, uh, of concerns and issues. Uh, current can, uh, sometimes you want to have an, a knowledge of what the current is flowing. You want to be able to handle the large currents of uh, starting motors, for example, or charging input capacitors. You may want to control current to charge uh, bulk capacitors. Um, you may want to protect against short circuits within the system, but you may also be a pro have a problem with current caused by uh, sudden transients on the, uh, on the power line or the distribution line uh, as well. And the thermal considerations, there's varieties. Do you want to just measure temperature? Do you want to uh, control the temperature so you, you can't over-temperature the system? Do you want to shut down um, and, and just wait for a while for it to cool off and then automatically restart? Or do you want to shut down and require manual resetting? Uh, or do you want to uh, have sensors elsewhere to feed into the shutdown circuit that would be fine? give you a mechanism for accomplishing thermal, thermal um, uh, protection. So at least those three uh, characteristics are things that we want to um, 
to be concerned about. We've talked about them already. Uh, voltage protection, um, oftentimes you've got enough inductances in the power lines that a sudden connection will cause ringing and, and uh, uh, transient overshoots, or, and we need to clamp that or, or protect against it or block it or turn off the circuit. Um, uh, and and um, also the issues I mentioned earlier about the possibility of having reverse polarity for some reason or another. Current protection, again, requires uh, consideration of what, what kind of current you want to measure uh, and what do you want to do with that information, whether you want to just limit the current or uh, turn something off or provide a threshold of, of uh, a different performance during turn on that you're going to have during normal operation. So, uh, as well as protect against short circuits, of course. So, current sensing and the ability to limit current is a, a definite uh, need for adequate protection. And of course, thermal characteristics, which I've already described, we need to determine when everything is working under its normal temperature limits and be able to take care of um, over temperature conditions. Um, we will you still use external uh, thermistors placed where uh, over temperature is a possibility within the sensor, but in the protection circuitry, which is passing the input current and interrupting the input current, if you had to do a shutdown, we can have uh, our own temperature, an internal temperature monitoring system that will do that in a self-contained um, system. So what has been implemented with a variety of discrete components to do a, a, a variety of different kinds of functions in the general field of protection, um, that has taken a lot of discrete circuits, a lot of discrete components to be able to implement all these things. And of course, the modern day technology has allowed us now to integrate much of that. And so what we're wanting to talk about today is a protection integrated circuit that is first of all, combine most if not all of these discrete components into a single device, um, greatly reduce the volume or the size of what it takes to do that and be able to make it a lot easier both to provide the protection you need and uh, ease the, ac the, um, the, the possibility of doing the qualification for the overall system. So what is a, uh, a modern day protection integrated circuit contained? Here we show um, several functions contained within this hypothetical uh, device. Uh, on the top line from left to right, this is the main power path as shown with uh, an input power probably from the distribution power on the, in the system chassis that comes in, goes through um, a semiconductor device that's intended to block reverse currents in case there was a reverse polarity applied, then through some kind of current sensing so that we can keep current under control, and then to, through a, a power device that can control the, either limit the current flow or turn it off or turn it on under program conditions. So we've got three elements potentially in the power path, and immediately we can see that that's something we've got um, some de high degree of concern with uh, because all of these are having um, uh, a fair amount, well, all of the system power passes through those three elements. Well, we've eased that a lot, uh, partially, mainly because of the ability to build highly reliable, highly rugged power MOSFET devices with extremely low RDS on during the on time. And remember, these chips have to conduct all the time the system is operating. Um, so you want the minimal amount of RDS on, so you have the lowest voltage drop and thereby the lowest power dissipation lost within this protection circuit. Recognizing also that's important just because in some cases you want the output voltage to go very close up to the input voltage. And any voltage drops in this protection path that, that is shown in this upper link uh, will subtract from that. And so to be able to operate 
a, with a lower input output differential, you want very minimal voltage drops, and we've been able to do that with MOSFET, MOSFET technology. And that applies also for the uh, reverse protection device. Typically, we could have just used a high voltage diode that would do that job, but that diode has to conduct in the normal mode, and there's a whole volt or more uh, voltage drop that uh, provides too much power dissipation and voltage loss in most of these system considerations. And finally, the current sense we've shown here is a current sense resistor and then some uh, amplifier that looks at the voltage drop across it. And this, of course, is always a problem if you have to implement it that way, and we don't. Uh, that device will not be there because we can get a current sense signal that is directly proportional to the current flowing through the power MOSFET on the, on the right by just sampling uh, one of their two of the cells that are built into that MOSFET structure. So we get much more accurate relationship uh, of current as a relation to the current that's actually through the, flowing through the power structure and we do it with no more voltage drop than the RDS on um, when that MOSFET is fully conducting. So all of, all, immediately we've got the power path with some significant savings in both uh, power loss and voltage loss. And of course we can also then put in some analog circuitry, the a voltage reference to set up a threshold for over voltage and under voltage sensing. And we've got a reference circuit that allows us to be able to do that. We can measure the temperature on this chip and use it to provide temperature control to either limit the, um, the power that is being delivered to the, uh, to the load or actually turn everything off. And finally, there's both a flag output available as well as incoming signals that will uh, externally command these switches to turn on or off. And then all the control logic to implement all the things that we said we wanted to do. So all of that now can be developed into, or has been developed into a single integrated circuits that uh, are operable in the uh, up to 60 volt uh, capability and, uh, and in the up to 10 amp um, current range. And that um, ends the, uh, the description of what we're trying to accomplish and the next module will show um, the actual products that, uh, and how they're used to be able to actually implement the, uh, the functions.